Hello. Welcome, everyone. We are here at session two of the learning and education sector. And we have a very special guest tonight. We are here with uh, Mark Donahue. And Mark will be sharing a session on the blended wisdom of the nature of learning, creativity, and living to your full potential. This is partly based on an entrepreneurial perspective, as well as an evolutionary perspective. So Mark's, uh, the title of his talk is The Future of Learning, Living from Purpose, Co-Creation, and an Evolutionary Perspective. So to give a little idea of Mark's rich background and biography, Mark is a lifetime entrepreneur and the founder and executive of Life Guides, a training and support consulting company for 30 years. Mark has specialized in the quadruple bottom line, strategies for people, profit, planet, and purpose. He's also passionate about scalable, regenerative in innovations. Um, Mark is one of the top 100 American thought leaders in trustworthy business behavior, as, um, as said by Trust Across America. In 2019, his company was awarded the grand prize in Abundance Impact Challenge by Singularity University and Abundance 360. He's also a member of Fast Company Impact Council, making him one of the 300 leaders who will redefine the future of enterprise. Welcome, Mark. Thank you so much, Laurie, and thank you to the whole Building the New World team. And it's really a, a true pleasure of the heart to be here with you today. Uh, Barbara Marks Hubbard was so foundational to the uh, creation of Building the New World. And she was my creative partner for over 25 years and uh, just uh, such a dear, a seminal part of my life. And I know for many, many of our viewers out there, uh, your life too. Certainly when her and I worked on her book, Conscious Evolution, it was uh, radical in my life then and seems to continue being radical as, as new readers uh, read it even today, 25 years later. <clears throat> You know, as we talk about the future of learning, which is broadly the uh, topic today, I'll try and share some of uh, Barbara's voice also here. Uh, uh, some of this is from uh, <clears throat> writings her and I were doing in the last two years of her life. Uh, but clearly, you know, foundationally, you know, I and Barbara believes that uh, learning really starts with purpose. And it's not just what the purpose of the learning is, it's, you know, what is your purpose? You know, what are you trying to do with your life or what are you trying to do at this moment uh, in your life? And it's good to understand uh, that because we move toward things in life. It's much less powerful to move away from things, moving toward a purpose, moving toward a passion, moving toward love is uh, really the most effective way to catalyze your learning. And we're all lifetime learners uh, on of uh, this podcast and that's foundational to who we are today it really defines uh, uh, perhaps all of our species today uh, globally you know, as Mark Twain said uh, 75 years ago the two most important days uh, in your life are the day you're born and the day you realize why and so you know as we look at the learning journey of life I'm always uh, brought back to the question of why. And, you know, as we look at the nature of learning also, uh, it's evolved. You know, as Barbara Marks Hubbard's teachings taught, you know, we are an evolving species. Our human potential has evolved. Our nature of even our purpose and passions uh, have evolved. Uh, we've really come uh, from nothing at all to uh, this ability today to, you know, co-create with evolution itself, as she would say. And, you know, as she would also say, what's the meaning of our power that's good? And that was her purpose. 
what is the meaning of our power that is good? That's the question she had been asking since uh, really the late 1940s at 16 when she had that awakening, uh, which you perhaps read about in her books. So at that level, you see her purpose. And then, you know, we, we can ask that question that why, why in our lives? And today, what's interesting is that the times really are radically different and the context is radically different for living your dreams, living your purpose. And I'm going to talk some about how that uh, context is different and how the tools are different that are available for you to, to live today. You know, many of them perhaps obvious, but this conversation is partly a, a, a synchronizing and synergizing and synthesizing of, of these different uh, multiple uh, kind of beams of light that are going on at once today in your life. Uh, certainly, you know, very broadly, uh, the crisis of our times are more revealed than ever in humanity. And uh, to an extent that a lot of people implode into depression, and uh, depression tends to be an implosion of energy, a sucking in, as opposed to uh, purpose, love, uh, passion moving out. And uh, yes, it is overwhelming sometimes to many of us to see the context of our times. And yet, as Barbara said, our crisis is our birth. The crisis here are the opportunity. The crisis, whether it's a personal crisis, you know, communal crisis, a national crisis, a global crisis, species crisis, um, are opportunities. Opportunities for us to learn and grow. And this to me is foundationally what calls us forward because we, we as a species are congregators, we're communal. We have been for millennia, whether by spirit or evolution, depending on your context, because of that interdependency, even back to a tribal level, we needed to have purpose beyond self. Without purpose beyond self, you couldn't survive, oftentimes because you needed to collaborate. Uh, yet, as Maslow taught, who's really the teacher, seminal psychologist that studied healthy persons for the first time versus Jung and Freud studying unhealthy people, Foundational to his teachings and research were that fulfillment, top of his pyramid, self-actualization even, has to have purpose beyond self. Fortunately, that's built into our species. And uh, that's a very uh, beautiful, fortunate thing today in the context of these crises because they cannot be solved alone. They cannot be solved in an insular perspective, in an old consciousness. Uh, and that's part of the learning that we're doing right now, part of the adaptability, part of what we're co-creating together. And, you know, if you're choosing not to, in your life, choose purpose at such a broad level as what I just referred to, you know, honor where you are, you know, meet yourself where you are at whatever level that is, you know, a lot of the learnings and teachings of life are simply about self as socrates said woman know thyself and this is so true if we don't know ourself that that's the ultimate learning journey then how can we really choose to with discerning action use the enormous powers of our error in 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 full wisdom for our human potential so you know meet yourself where you are for me the personal growth journey has been foundational to then lead to the social potential movement. As some people say, human potential movement to social potential. That was even the sub uh, uh, title of Barbara's book, Conscious Evolution, and paraphrased words there, of course. And <clears throat> as we look at you know, our times today, it's very interesting we look at the nature of learning and where it's evolved, the whole system's evolved, and as Barbara taught with one of her favorite uh, writers and teachers, Teilhard de Chardin, the Jesuit uh, monk, 
she loved to teach about the noosphere. That's N-O-O-S, noosphere like atmosphere and biosphere. And noosphere is the <clears throat> knowledge sphere. <clears throat> the knowledge sphere that we exist in today, that we're born in today, just like we're born into the atmosphere. And the noosphere sustains us. Well, you know, today, any child is born with the power once attributable to God or gods just a few hundred years ago. It, it's a radically new learning environment. And how, how do we use that <clears throat> together as a species and as an individual? This is foundational uh, to our learning journey uh, today. And we can also tap into our collective intelligence in a way that only shamans and guides and mystics could not long ago. And many of the visions and the stories, the, the Bibles, the books, the Korans, the, you know, the teachings of all these traditions uh, of spirit religion, whether it's non-religious, non-religious like Buddhist teachings or indigenous uh, type tribal shamanic teachings. They were, you know, looking at our collective and bringing forth to the tribe uh, knowledge that need to be brought back and visions of the future of where we're going and uh, tuning in to the collective the collective including the voice of the earth, the voice of spirit, the voice of, of all the hearts, not just, not just the leaders. And so today we have unique opportunities as an individual to feel in, understand, whether that be intellectually or in other modalities, collective intelligence, collective wisdom, global brain as has been written about by uh, many, many leading thinkers. So what do we do with that perspective? And again, this is redefining the nature of learning. As we talk about the future of learning, we have to look at how radically new the space that you're sitting in right now is. And we're seeing the whole story, the whole story of our existence, the whole story of our times, radically differently. You know, until we started to pick up background radiation in the 60s and one of the great scientific feats of history start to understand the Big Bang forward to us and that this was, you know, an evolved system. Whether that was a moment bursting forth because of God's love and gifts or that was a bursting forth because of an evolutionary calling forth, whatever your perspective is. We, we, we are evolving, we have evolved. The whole story is a creation story. All the religious stories are creation stories. You are a creator. You are part of the story. You have a unique self. What do you choose to learn in that context? What do you choose to choose for your purpose in that context? They're, they're very, very connected. And they're very, very important in this moment in time because we're at a tipping point of tipping points. This is like no other time. We've never been here before as a species. And so being able to see the whole story helps us. And also having wisdoms like Barbara's teaching unconscious evolution, that we actually have arrived at what she started to initially describe in the 60s, 50 years ago at the moment of conscious evolution, where we can co-create with creation itself, co-create even with genetics. Think about that. We can co-create with nature or co-destroy. Just look at the oceans and what we've done there, the ability of humanity to destroy or to create with nature itself right now. It is unprecedented. What do we do with this? What do you choose? And as we look at that crisis, or a series of crises, we can look at it through the 11 wheels that building the new world uses very wisely, very uh, much, as they say, 
aligned with Barbara Marks Hubbard's Wheel of Peace or Wheel of Co-Creation, Wheel of Innovation. Sometimes we call it the Wheel of Golden Innovations. That's what we called it back in 1995-96, which is referenced in the Conscious Evolution book. Uh, that gives you a, a broader perspective of all the different pieces coming together and all the different powers, all the different opportunities. And as we look at all of these uh, pieces coming together, you know, we're seeing the opportunities today, at least I am, and I hope you are, as uh, the, the crisis, as the opportunities the crisis of the opportunities of our times for entrepreneurial action, using the entrepreneurial worldview, the spirit-based worldview, the conscious evolution worldview, the, the evolutionary perspective, the powerful tools of the noosphere available to us all, they're democratized, they're available in an extraordinarily amazing way of a transfer of wealth of much more than the Library of Alexandria, available to every person on the planet for free. Perhaps you look at a few ads, that's all you're paying. And I do believe that as we synthesize all of this, we come to understand that the future of learning also requires an entrepreneurial mindset. If you are choosing your purpose, to be a purpose that interacts with others, collaborates with others, and impacts change. And most of our purposes in life are about creating change. And an entrepreneurial mindset is entrepreneurship of all kinds. Uh, being a mother or father of a child is very entrepreneurial. We could list through all the skills, but entrepreneurship ultimately is about being able to manage change effectively creating outcomes that are desired. And so I encourage all of you to study and be students as we talk about the future of learning about an entrepreneurial mindset and the tools of entrepreneurship. Now you can bring those into all your endeavors, whether you're a priest, whether you're a president, you know, whether you're parenting right now is your key passion in life whether you're a frontline worker in the healthcare crisis, how do we apply an entrepreneurial mindset? And this is something Barb and I are working on very deeply that I brought into her teachings, because uh, that wasn't a purview uh, perspective that was integrated before. It was part of what brought us back together so deeply after our deep collaboration 26 years ago. But it was more than that. What also brought Barbara and I back together was the exponential mindset. And if you're going to learn today beyond the five or six things I have mentioned here, you are strongly advised to learn an exponential mindset because you're living in an exponential world today. And what I mean by that is the personal computer sitting on my desk here that cost a thousand dollars or so. When we sent the first man to the moon in 1969, the entirety of NASA and the U.S. military had less computer power than is sitting in my computer right here for a thousand dollars. Imagine what we did with that. It's an astonishing era we live in. The power at our fingertips, and what's even more shocking is the power in this personal computer because of Moore's law and other ways that exponentials evolve will be about 60 times faster and more powerful in 10 years. And about the same price in purchasing power dollars as it is today. What does that mean? You having 60 times the power in your hands for computing that the entire U.S. government had just in 1969, a decade from now. <laughs> it's just, it's astonishing. And what's happening is we have multiple exponential curves underway right now. And in all types of science, particularly in medicine, exponential medicine, 
in all the different 11 different areas, the, the different sectors, we're seeing technology go exponential. And this has been going on for a long time, no doubt. I mean, this is what created the internet, the going from, you know, 12.2 baud on the internet to 5G today in the course of, uh, you know, really modern internet was, you know, Anderson's on the internet browser was invented in uh, the beginning of 1994. It's only 26 years. It, it, it's absolutely astonishing. So you're already living in an exponential world. You might not have quite known that this is going to continue. And as, as Peter Diamandis says, which I think is a, a great quote, uh, if you think technology is moving fast today, it will never be this slow again. And Ray Kurzweil, his partner, I've studied with Ray and Peter for about six years, uh, has this other great paired quote that I love to put in to this particular, we were talking about learning and human potential and social potential. This is why we learn and spirit potential. But as Ray said, we're no longer computationally strained. We're only imagination strained. What opportunity does that invite you into? So this era requires uh, an exponential perspective. For example, the environmental degradation going on the planet, many people in the environmental movement feel like we've already passed the tipping point, even a tipping point of tipping points. There's absolutely no going back. And that quite possibly is true. I'm, I've been a deep environmentalist and, uh, you know, built a hundred plus million dollar clean tech only venture capital fund back in 2003 and as the founder. And believe me, I, I bleed green, not only because of that, but also because I went to Babson College and our school color is green. Yet uh, what the environmentalists sometimes forget is that most, not all, but most environmental degradation is on a linear degradation right now. Whereas the technologies that can be restorative are on an exponential curve. And at some point that exponential increase in power is so radically healing, regenerative, restorative. Let's just say that ends up being in uh, 25 years, a total disruption of the carbon-based energy environment in favor of renewables. We already know solar has been growing faster than an exponential curve for 15 to 20 straight years. You know what I told you about the PC on your desk? Well, imagine what that means for solar in 25 years or wind or energy storage or other things that are seminal to change the environmental equation. Now I understand that, you know, coral in the sea doesn't get fixed by a semiconductor chip uh, in New York City. So don't, don't take me wrong on that. Yet this can be restorative and shift the whole equation radically enough that we stop the speeding train from hitting the wall and going boom. So we're so fortunate that we have purpose beyond self as our true north uh, because these exponential powers, what Barbara and I are working on, we gave a wonderful uh, lead presentation at Singularity University's annual global executive summit uh, about uh, six months before she died. And it's actually online if you want to Google it. It's a 45 minute presentation. And uh, it wasn't our most resonant conversation ever, but the material is, is, is great. Uh, if you want to learn more about exponentials and Barbara and I's view on this, uh, a foundational piece of why we believe, Barbara and I believe, that we'll, we will get through these times positively is because of this need of human beings to have purpose beyond self, not self-interest. It's really foundationally the golden rule, one of the great learnings and teachings of all time. If you take all religions, all nonviolent religions on the planet, and you look for the most common teaching throughout all of them, 
you'll find the golden rule there, the law of karma, do unto others as you have done unto yourself, as you sow, so shall you reap. Uh, you know, keeps on going on and on. I could quote many religions. This foundationally, uh, the, that's reflecting empathy. And I believe that there's a radical escalation of empathy that will happen globally. In fact, the COVID environment is the first global empathy event. It's the first time that every human on the planet was at risk for the identical dimension of life and death that could end their life. And that was radically disrupting life as we know it on the planet, <clears throat> whether you were the Pope or the person on the street, whether you were the king or you're the car washer. And so in that way, it gives us empathy for each other in a new way, in a, a radical global empathy event. And I do believe that, for example, with other businesses like where I'm the founder of the last three years building uh, life guides, we're trying to be the largest for-profit accelerator of empathy on the planet to see lifeguides.com. We do this with corporations as our partners, not as our enemies, as our partners. And it is possible to create regenerative models at scale, what we call in the exponentials community, massively transformative purposes. How do you help a billion people on the planet? That's a massively transformative purpose. There's a corollary in those masterminds that how do you make a billion dollars at the same time too, which, hey, give it to charity if you don't want it. Nothing wrong with that. And we also have the ability today in this context to access all spirit traditions. It's, it's so amazing the gifts that exist there. And we have these mega trends going that help us. And the business is a force for good is something I've been part of since college days. Mission-driven enterprise, mission-driven entrepreneurship. It continues to grow on an exponential curve. You know, as David Corden said last night in his keynote, you know, fortunately we've proven our amazing ability to be adaptable and radically change and evolve as a society in the last 50 years. A lot of people say we can't do this in a positive way right now. Well, we already know how to evolve like that. Some of the last 50 years was not pretty in how we evolve, but we have this ability to do this. Unfortunately, no human being has ever been through this before. It's like Buckminster Fuller said, one of Barbara's great protege, uh, you know, teachers, uh, you know, it'd be great and we were born if we had a, a, a rule book or a guide book about how to live a purposeful life and how to live as a good human being and reach our human potential and social potential. So we're really at that point uh, where we, we don't have all the solutions. Uh, yet one thing's for sure, uh, as Barbara taught, co-creation is foundational. We cannot do this alone. And most of learning, particularly for lifetime learners, but in general, and most of growth is about collaboration. And it's faster and it's more fun. This is another key area that you need to learn. If you're not an expert at collaboration, learn these tools. I've already listed nine different areas for you to be manifesting your best to bring in the future of learning, to realize your full purpose and your full dreams. And part of co-creating is being able to be in resonance with others, to be in shared purpose, to be in true authentic connection. And really love is foundational. The whole nature of the creation story is a love story. It's a story of connection. It's a story of interdependence. We need to come at our learning, come at our purpose, come at our life from love and empathy. This is how the learning actually can manifest greatness. That's what attracts evolutionary purpose, evolutionary spirit, it attracts the force of nature when you come from love and empathy with your learning and your actions and your discernment. And it attracts others. Birds of a flock fly together. It attracts others to co-create with you in purpose. Don't be afraid to lead with your purpose, with your heart, with your empathy, and with your genius is we can conjoin genius, as Barbara said, join our genius. This is ultimately how we build the future of our full human potential. So what is the invitation of our times? 
question is what purpose calls you to go forward? That is the invitation. And as Barbara Marks Hubbard said, it's about evolution by choice, not by chance. Together, we can do this. This is the most exciting moment in all human history. The power is in our hands. The love is in our hearts. The potential is here for true greatness. Join me. Join me. We can do this together. I love you all.